In this lecture, we will talk about z-scores. The first thing we need to do is talk about how do we compute a z-score. We will then move on to talking about how we can use z-scores to understand the concept of relative standing. Finally, we will cover the concept of the area under the curve using z-scores and the z-distribution. You may recall in class that we handed out a table called the proportion of area under the standard normal curve for values of z. This same table is also available on Beachboard in case you didn't get a copy of it. The reading that will complement this lecture are listed at the bottom. Of this. These readings are, are from the fourth edition of our course textbook. All right, let's talk about computing z-scores. You'll notice on this slide we see a left formula and a right formula. Well, they're basically the same formula. In each case, it's how do I can translate a raw score into a z-score. So you'll notice in both cases, you start with a score x. You then subtract the mean, and finally you divide by the standard deviation. You'll notice the formula on the left is for when working with population data. The one on the right is when you're working with sample data. But it's the same concept in both. x minus a mean divided by a standard deviation that presents your z-score. So let's take this, these formulas that we've talked about and put them into a couple of examples. So imagine this. Let's read from the top. Our data show that individuals watch an average of 14 hours of television per week with a standard deviation of 4. So you'll see I have listed the mean of 14, standard deviation of 4. Let's take our first individual. Our first individual is Joe. Joe watches 16 hours each week. So what's his z-score? Well, his raw score was 16. So we know he was above the mean, and he was two hours above the mean. So we know he watched more TV than, than the average individual would, right? He watched 16, the average was 14. But what's his z-score? So we take the formulas that we saw on the previous slide, and we insert Joe's information. So you'll notice that we take Joe's raw value of 16, subtract the value of 14, which was the mean, and then divide by 4, the standard deviation. That gives us an answer of 0 0.5. So Joe's z-score is 0 0.5. Well, how do we interpret that? Well, because z-scores are no longer in the original units of the variable, so in this case they're no longer in hours of television, they are now in standard deviations above or below the mean. And that's what a z-score tells us. Are you above the mean? Are you below the mean? And how many standard deviations are you above or below the mean? So looking at Joe, Joe had a z-score of 0 0.5. So Joe is 0 0.5 standard deviations above the mean. Let's move on to our second person. So Janet, Janet down on the bottom of the slide. Janet watches 11 hours each week. So what's her z-score? Well, once again, we take her raw value of 11 and place it into the formula. So we take 11 minus the mean of 14 divided by a standard deviation of 4. And for Janet, we get a z-score of negative 0.75. So what does that tell us? It tells us that Janet is 0.75 standard deviations below the mean. So in the simplest sense, that's how we compute z-scores and do a pretty basic interpretation of them. The next thing we need to understand about z-scores is how they can be used in order to understand the concept of relative standing. So let's read from the top. So z-scores can also be used to compute the relative standing for a particular score. For example, if you want to know how well you performed on a midterm relative to or compared against the other students in the class, your z-score provides this information. So what this is saying is sometimes we don't want to just know how well did you do in the raw form, but how did you do almost in a competitive sense. Many of you may have recalled being in taking standardized testing where you may have been told you were in the 86th percentile or you scored better than this percentage of people. That's kind of what we're doing here with these z-scores and the concept of relative standing. So let's take an example of this. All right, let's say that you took two midterms this semester. The first was for your statistics class. 
The second was for your theory class. So in your statistics class, you received a score of 80. The class mean was 75 and a standard deviation of five. We'll get to those in a second. In your second one, your theory class, you received a score of 85 with a class mean of 82 and a standard deviation of four. Okay, so let's look at just your raw scores. In statistics, you scored an 80. Your theory, you scored an 85. Well, it appears in your raw scores that you did better in theory, right? 85 is definitely better than 80, but how did you perform relative to the other students in each of those classes? So this is where that idea of it being somewhat of a competitive look at how well you did in comparison to the other people who have done, had done that same test. So that's why we needed to also know not just your raw scores, but we also are providing the information about the class mean and the class standard deviation. So if we look down to the bottom half of the slide, we see what happens once we translate our raw scores into z-scores. So let's look at statistics first. All right, statistics, you got a raw score of 80, you subtract a mean of 75, you divide by the standard deviation of five, you get a z-score of 1.0. And in theory, you had a raw score of 85, you subtract the mean of 82, and then you divide by the standard deviation of four, you end up with a z-score of 0 0.75. So what happens here is in statistics, your score was one standard deviation above the mean, while in theory, your score was three quarters or 0.75 standard deviations above the mean. So actually, even though your raw score in theory looked better, your relative standing, AKA your Z-score was actually better in statistics where you had a one versus a 0 0.75 in your theory class. Another concept for how we can use Z-scores is using that area under the curve. And you'll notice here, I have a note at the top of this one where I say for this exercise, you will need the proportions of area under the standard normal curve for values of Z handout that I provided in class. I mentioned that previously, and it's also available on Beachport. All right, so how do we use this idea? Well, let's take a look at some, of the, some examples. So first, let's start with our setting. Our setting is this. The data were collected about exercise habits. And let's say that we found in a study about exercise habits that on average, people exercise 20 hours each month. So we need to have that mean with a standard deviation of six. All right, so we have those two pieces of information, the mean and the standard deviation. Now we ask the question, based upon that, what percentage of people exercise more than 30 hours each month? Well, the first thing I recommend in order to answer a question like this is draw a picture. And I know my drawing, just like in class, is not very good. And in fact, I had to take a picture of it, so bear with me on that. But as we look at this picture that I have here on the slide, you'll notice it, it looks like a normal curve. And, but I have two sort of legends or pieces of information about what the sort of the number line is on that curve. You'll notice that I have the X as well as the Z values underneath that normal distribution. And the reason why I do this is to understand how we translate from a raw score into a Z score. So when we look at the X values along there, we saw the mean was 20. So that's why it's right there in the middle of the standard curve. And then the question we're asking is, what percentage of people exercise more than 30 hours each month? So I just drew a line to mark where roughly where a value of 30 might be on that number line. So you'll notice that 30 is greater than 20. And so I, I drew it to the right of the mean. Below that, you'll notice that I have what is denoted as the Z units. Well, we know that the mean of the Z distribution will always be zero. So that's right. Why, that's why right underneath the mean of 20, I have a Z value of zero. Just say that the mean of the Z distribution is zero. Then underneath the 30, I have a question mark. 
Well, that's because we need to know what that z-score is before we can look at our area under the curve chart. So, what we have here is reading from the slide, your picture shows a normal curve with both the raw units x and the standardized units z. You need to solve for the area above a raw score of 30 based upon our question. And that's why we see that the area above 30 is shaded in. So, I take 30, enter it into the z equation, 30 minus 20 divided by 6, I get a z-score of 1.67. So that raw score of 30 translated into a z-score of 1.67. So I need to figure out what is the area under the curve that is beyond or above a z-score of 1.67. So I look up my area under the curve table, I look at column C because that's the column that tells us the area under the curve from that z-score out to its closest tail. And I, when I do that, I find that I look at 1.67, column C, I see a value as 0 0.0475. So that, I could either leave that as 0 0.0475 or that translates into 4.75%. So the answer to what percentage of people exercise more than 30 hours each month the answer is 4.75%. Second example, same idea, and we're just gonna get a little bit more complex with each one, but it's nothing to worry about. Just break down, draw a picture, and go through the steps. So in this question, we have the same setup about exercise habits. We now ask what percentage of people exercise less than 15 hours each month? So the first thing I do, draw a picture. The mean of that distribution is 20 in raw units or zero in ZE scores. 15 is below the mean. So I just draw a line a little bit below the mean to represent the 15. I now need to solve for the Z score. What does 15 translate into when I transform it into a Z score? So I need to solve for the area below a raw score of 15 in order to answer my question, and that's why you see the area of the curve below 15 shaded in. So I translate my z score, or excuse me, I translate my raw score of 15 into a z score. So 15 minus 20 divided by 6, and I end up with a z score of negative 0.83. Now, even though it's a negative z-score, our table that we are working with, that, it, that we handed out, only shows positive values. But that's fine, because the z-distribution is a symmetric curve. So, I just need to look up the 0 0.83 on the area under the curve table, and then I can still use either the B or C column to figure out what I'm looking for. Similar to our first question, I'm looking for the area from my z-score out to its closest tail of the distribution. And that's why I'm going to look at column C. So I find 0 0.83, I look at column C, and then I notice that I have a value of 0 0.2033. So it's saying that that shaded area is 20.33% of the area under the curve. So to answer my question, what percentage of people exercise less than 15 hours each month? 20.33%. Example number three. Here, we're going to add in just a little bit more, but once again, nothing to get worried about. So we ask the question, what percentage of people exercise more than 18 hours each month? I draw my picture. Now 18, as you'll notice, let's examine that picture. Same thing, we have the raw units and the standardized units. But 18 is below the mean. But the question asks, what percentage of people exercise more than that? So you'll notice I've got sort of two sections I need to solve for. I need to figure out what is the area between a raw score of 18 and the mean of 20. And I also need to solve for everything above the mean. Well, 
the first thing that isn't too hard is the fact that from the mean, a mean of 20, all the way up to positive values above that, that is 50%. Why is it 50%? Well, because the normal distribution is a unimodal bell-shaped symmetric curve. So half of the area under the curve is below the mean and half is above the mean. So from a, the mean all the way up to all positive values, that's 50%. So I just know that. I'm going to use my area under the curve chart to figure out the area between a raw score of 18 and the mean of 20. So I need to translate my 18 into a z-score, as we see down at the bottom. So 18 minus 20 divided by 6, I end up with a z-score of negative 0 0.33. So once again, we don't worry about the negatives, we just look at the absolute value of 0 0.33 on the area under the curve table. But now I'm, I'm no longer looking at column C. Now I need to look at column B. Why do I look at column B? Well, because I'm trying to solve for the area between that z-score of negative 0 0.33 and the mean. So when I do that, I look at column B, I get the value of 0.1293. That only gives me the area from a z-score of negative 0 0.33 and the mean. So that's one portion, but I also need to add the entire other half of the area under the curve from the mean above it. So I take 0.1293, I add to it, 50% or 0 0.50 and I get a final answer of 62.93%. So what percentage of people exercise more than 18 hours each month? 62.93%. All right, my final example asks, what percentage of people exercise between 16 and 25 hours each month? Uh-oh, so we now have two raw scores. Don't worry about it, it just means we're gonna have to translate two raw scores into z-scores. Nothing to worry about. I start once again by drawing a picture. And you'll notice here, given, and make sure you understand that how the picture reflects what the question's asking. What percentage of people exercise between 16 and 25 hours each month? So 16, I have listed there. 25, I have listed there. So I need to figure out two distinct areas. I need to figure out the area between 16 and the mean of 20, as well as the area between the mean and 25. So both 16 and 25 need to be translated into z-scores. So I've omitted some of the equations on this slide just to keep it simple, but following our basic z-score formulas from previous slides, we notice that the 16 translates into a z-score of negative 0.67, and a raw score of 25 translate, translates into a z-score of 0.83. So for both cases, I am going to look at the B column to get the areas between those z-scores and the mean. So when I look at 0.67, I look at column B, I get an answer of 0.2486. I do the same thing for a z-score of 0.83. I look at column B and I get a value of 0.2967. So in order to answer the question, what percentage of people exercise between 16 and 25 hours each month, I need to add those two scores together. So I add 0.2486 plus 0.2967, I get a final answer of 54.53%. So what percentage of people exercise between 16 and 25 hours each month? 54.53%.